बता से एट दिस कनेक्ट दैट वी आर डूइंग आई एम बेसिकली इनिशिएटिव टू आस्क दिस डिसिप्लिनरी कार्ड डायलॉग ऑन शेयर ड्यूज और इंग्रेडिएंट्स टू बी एथिक्स एंड इंटेग्रिटी ऑफ द ब्रांड्स एंड यू गाइस आर द परफेक्ट बैलेंस टीम आई वुड से फॉर दिस साल दस and um, the collaboration this week discussion will provide a platform to uh, leaders to come together and basically exchange insights from the best kind of practices and um, innovative approaches and uh, ultimately contributing basically to a broader understanding of the importance of premium ingredients when we talk about this so uh, we uh, we're looking forward to having a productive uh, conversation here on our panel discussion with everyone thank you for being here with us today thanks so much uh, for for inviting thank you so much ashan ji for inviting me for for a panel that uh, is discussing a topic that is so close to uh, not just my heart personally but it also literally is the dna of the brand that we're building so i'm looking forward to picking everyone's brain sharing ideas with jovita uh, with parul with yourself and with yusuf mani thank you so much for having me thank you ashan for having us and it's a pleasure you guys i mean jyoti is a favorite as always And Parul, it's a pleasure to meet you, and I'm sure you'll be a favorite after this conversation, Annie. Anyway. No, thank you for having me. I think it's a very, very. Uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to this discussion, which is very much the fabric of uh, Gladful itself. Gladful right. actually is, um, uh, I would say, a clean label breakfast and snacks brand, where uh, the focus is truly get more protein from the dals and sprouts that our mothers and grandmothers used to focus on, and we're kind of trying to bring that back to. uh you know modern mothers today so right. uh, lo- really looking forward to this discussion and learning from all of you so let me start with my first question which is um, you know understanding ingredient labels so uh, i want to delve in deeper into the basics which is uh, acknowledging that each of us in a decision making when it comes decision makers since we all are decision makers um and we are also end consumers so i think we are the right people not me who all are the right people here for this uh, you know um, for this topic but how can we basically navigate and understand the information which is presented on the ingredient labels effectively so i'll i'll pitch in first actually so okay. we we spend a lot of time on building our brand communications and front of the pack obviously becomes very very critical uh, when you are right. on the shelf or even in your website the the first picture or the a plus content on amazon the first image is very critical how you look after i say a lot of communication or miscommunication also happens the kind right. of uh, ingredients shown on the pack has a very different story well when you go back at the pack and see that when we realize in our brand like juice we are saying that we talk about real chicken there were a lot of brands who were communicating chicken and chicken by products but the front picture was of real chicken and we found the gap that consumers are still not very and in our industry very uh, interesting is that our consumers are different and customers are different my consumer is a pet who doesn't say is he likes it or not likes it and somebody on his behalf makes a decision to buy so he likes the front of the pack and he picks the food, uh, food but what goes inside that he hardly worries about he hardly sees and and that uh, has to that that problem goes to the pet actually so we started finding and talking to a lot of pet parents and understanding what all they look into first when you they pick up the pack of the any pet food and they said how many how much protein is there 32% protein 26% protein but nobody was talking about where the protein is coming like mm-hmm. interestingly uh, you see our hair is 100% protein but can we digest it no digestibility is zero so uh, so you can't consume that same if protein is much protein is there but it is coming from a offal or coming from the feathers of a chicken that not going to give you the right kind of protein you need and then proteins are made up of amino acids essential non essentials so we thought of like why not to have a major thought go- going at the back of the pack as well so and and i'm very happy to share always that uh, in our category the consumers call themselves pet parents they call they do not call themselves a consumer right they don't call them a buyer so again the same for a per kid when you buying can you emphasize how to read the back of the pack how are the ingredients are designed is there any science behind it that's very very important to make our consumers knowledgeable and and in our industry the gap is very high because we don't know a lot of people as i am a vet and a lot of people come and ask that can dog get a diabetes can dog get a heart attack so all these very drastic basic things which we our customers should know and if as a brand we are able to solve that what happens we making him more 
aware and and aware and helping him to make a better purchase decision so the category that i play in sukmani it is fraught with just talking about the elephant in the room and talking about everything else so if a beverage is packed with sugar nobody's talking about sugar they yeah. talk about how much fun it is and yeah. how thrilling and adventurous it is so they kind of just miss sell it with an emotion that yeah. has much to do with uh, ingredient education uh, and it's mostly through exciting ads especially of cola and energy drinks uh, so kind of defeat the purpose that somebody should even consume it for a health reason or someone should even care about uh, what's in the beverage because it makes you feel awesome so that's one giant misplacement of information that i see in beverage category the other i also see especially if you talk about for example fruit based beverages right even the juices that you see on shelves today that say 100% uh, you know orange juice for example i will not name the brand but yeah. the moment you turn around and actually read the label it is 20% orange concentrate uh, and uh, if you are in the beverage space i'm sure jovita knows how concentrates are made and uh, there is not much nutrition left in that so it's then eventually about how do you normalize that concentrate and make it into a 1 liter beverage that tastes great i'm sure lots of additions of flavors stabilizers and things like that are done to kind of mimic final orange uh, juice flavor but mm-hmm. one does not know what process that uh, uh, orange went through before it, it landed in his glass or her glass as a juice and uh, in that i feel um, the awareness is needed both ways brands like us we take pride in front of pack labeling uh, what's in it is what's in it um we are very conscious about what is inside the drink and more importantly what's kept out of the drink and we talk about it a lot i feel uh, once one of uh, us brands will hit a certain scale uh, even if the regulators don't do it or for whatever uh, you know their priorities uh, i think like once brands or uh, insurgent brands like us show the way i feel like even the bigger brands will be forced to kind of look inwards introspect and understand that this is probably what what the customer requires but mm-hmm. as of today uh, that's not happening so it's an uphill fight for all the young brands that want to educate and want to be honest and uh, intentional mm-hmm. about the building i completely resonate with jyoti when she says this i mean it is such a struggle for brands like us that actually do the real work in the sense of um, for example we don't use any concentrates right we fresh fruit coming in every morning into our kitchen fresh fruit Absolutely. juice getting squeezed and made into cocktail mixers on a daily basis but how do you say that on a pack right because every other competitor brand is also saying 100% natural yeah it really <laughs> is a struggle right because the minute you turn that around and you will see concentrates and you will see ins you know 243 and whatever else that's going in there right and it's such a tough it's so tough to then tell the <laughs> consumer that hey listen there's a difference what you read what is really yeah we <laughs> yeah, are right i mean for us we have the luxury of uh, so we are not really a healthy product okay so we are going to be very honest about it because come on we are very clear that our product is had with alcohol so we yeah. can't really we are not in that space to make that claim but we right. are very we were very clear right from the time that we started that we would use nothing but real ingredients when it came to making a good cocktail uh, mixer right it was just we just didn't even a coke is a cocktail mixer as of today a cola is a cocktail mixer right so you can make a very fancy named cuba libre using just cola and rum and and make it into a cocktail but what really goes behind it and we noticed that every single brand was just doing exactly that sugar water f- nature identical flavorings is the favorite word you <laughs> <laughs> i love that word every time i see it i'm like oh my god like you know if it was so easy today we own our own manufacturing simply because we just can't get it manufactured outside no one's going to do the work that we do today I have my girls who sit in the kitchen and clean mint in the morning, and it's bundles and bundles of mint. And there are days that, as an entrepreneur and as a business person, you do question yourself: Why am I doing this? Is it just easy to just buy nature identical, or you know, mint flavoring and add it in? Right? It would be. But then eventually, it's all going to come down to what your ethics are, what your brand stands for, what you are as a person, really, and how that is 
you know how you resonate with your brand and the people who use your product eventually are able to tell the difference you know i think i feel optimistic about the entire situation because i think those who uh, you know of course india is a divided country when it comes to economic strata but who those who can pay are willing to learn openly today and there's enough awareness about it today so uh, there was a point in time where you know possibly the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s where uh, any packaging on the shelf would contain what the product truly has you know they'll display some amount of grain they'll display some amount of you know uh, super, super uh, legume on the pack and they'll say has has ragi has millets and even if the back pack, pack had only 1% of it the front of pack will really be full of visuals which will entice the customer thankfully as a consumer today every consumer that i speak to does not only believe on the front front of pack that they do look at the back of pack now it could be true only for parents and pet parents but i think this is a growing habit even with teenagers even my kids have talked got two kids and or both of them actually look, look at the back of pack and try and understand how yeah. much of what is there so i do you know kind of uh, some of the changes that the food secure safety security authority in india has brought about i know it's slow uh, we've got so many brands and there are so many people but at the same time i do believe that we're taking the right step so small things like adding percentages in your list of ingredients is something that i'm increasingly seeing across brands so yeah. people decide how much of real food is there versus a maida or you know whatever whatever also very interesting is that earlier a lot of packaging used to only talk about the good, good ingredients which are there now right. a lot of packaging also talks about what it doesn't have like you know no no yeah. palm oil or no trans fats or no cholesterol or you know whatever no maida more number of brands actually talking about these claims very openly a lot more on the front of pack to communicate the entire picture and um while we might not have the large marketing budgets of large cpg this sets a little bit of a culture of consumer expectation in motion which will actually eventually in the next 3 4 years push the others to follow suit so i do feel optimistic about the solution uh, you know the entire change that's happening um also food safety security authorities recently also proposed a marker on the front of pack you know how good or harmful your product is and you know if it is green that means it's really good for you if it's uh, mildly red or amber it's possibly not so great and a lot right. of cpgs the large cpgs are fighting this off at the moment uh, but i eventually will come into being which will again make it very easy for the consumer to understand whether the product is great for me or not so um, yeah i mean i look at the brighter side but i know there's a lot more for us uh, to do so um, my next question to you guys is that um, you know i want you to share uh, some moment uh, from your lives where you uh, kind of really understood you know the significance of using real ingredients in food uh, you know um, what was the subsequent process uh, and how did it really happen where you know it contributed to the ethos of the brands you know let's say i'm going to give you a quick answer on that i was forced to do it No, I'm still. I I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. why? Okay? Uh, it's because I am a very personally a very health conscious person. I'm a runner. I'm very careful about what I put into my you know food. Uh, but the only thing that I never ever thought was that I would be in a space one day where I was making a product and I would have to watch it. And Jordan actually put his foot down and said, "Hey, listen. If we are doing it, this is the way we're doing it, or we're not doing it at all." Wow. I was not allowed to make a concession. <laughs> right so although there was like i said as an entrepreneur you're sometimes forced to make those decisions uh, where you are trying to say it's easier to use mint flavoring instead of cleaning a mint because the unit economics where you are having 10 girls sitting and cleaning mint doesn't really work and then you are that's why the highest priced product in the market today when it comes to cocktail mixers but yeah. i am today forced by my partner to say hey listen this is how we're doing it or we're not doing it at all and i think <laughs> and i think that's my fault right because i brought him up that <laughs> i think <laughs> okay. that's what a good partnership is all about i think uh, the vacuum or the void that you had in your thought process i think jordan filled that for you yeah and, yeah uh, wise call so i yeah. would say that the i don't regret it i don't i don't regret you regret it the force the force did wonders for you Yeah. In my case, uh, I feel like my time in Japan had a lot to kind of influence the way I, I look at um, 
just taking pride in your culture a b yeah. in ingredients and recipes that are culturally native to you so i see uh, a lot more Okay, influence from the West in India than I see in a country like Japan. So for every cola or an energy drink, you will find tens of different beverages that are made from traditional uh, Japanese teas, whether it's oolong or matcha or you know black tea, green tea, and uh, using traditional Japanese herbs and medicines. And they consume it like there is uh, the idea that uh, something refreshing has to be really loud and exaggerated and extremely sweet and acidic. I felt like that wasn't there and that kind of gave me this insight that it doesn't always have to be loud if it's in a bottle it doesn't have to be overpowering uh, for it to be refreshing and um, so that seed kind of came to me from there and uh, we didn't happen to compromise on anything we sourced our teas painfully from Arunachal Pradesh uh, which is uh, you know very difficult logistically for us but it's just the way we like to do things we like to with our rightly pointed out beverage industry broadly is sugar color water flavor um, mm-hmm. and acid right but for you to say i want to clean this lake and i want to do uh, like think it from bottoms up that right. what is a beverage supposed to have and um, you know um, the recipe and the framework if it doesn't exist then it's a very uphill battle for brands uh, to choose like it's much easier for me to do a mango drink or uh, today I would probably be making 10 times sales if I did a, a mango be- beverage under tea fit with full sugar but uh, that's a also a call that you have to take as a brand b you have to believe also in your customer that today that base is small but you are building it for tomorrow and see also a little bit of a sense of responsibility beyond just building a business maybe a meaningful business is probably a better choice so yeah for me it was just the kids yeah actually my boys were uh, six and nine at the time i really uh, thought about this in fact i'm not a very good cook i am a huge food eater i'm a big snacker myself okay and i worked in cadbury's for about 14 years before i quit Ooh, and lucky started that thing so <laughs> i i would like i still love to consume everything out of a packet but that's the reality yeah. and uh, you know i think uh, that the pediatrician trips uh, just increased in 2021 and that's the time i actually quit and uh, you know kind of tried to take things under my control so <laughs> that i wasn't very right. involved in the tiffin boxes as well so um you know my whole funda was that listen if i have to up the protein intake these kids are not going to have five cups of dal or yogurt mm-hmm. uh, i make it interesting and i need to make sure that they just basically honestly we just wanted more plants in their diet more legumes more millets and so get back to the roots um my grandmom is a huge propagator of sprouts so we actually started making very interesting fruit from sprouted millet sprouted uh, you know kulthi sprouted bajra sprouted uh, like you know lentils and today yeah. uh, like 70 80% of our business is just based on eight nine different kinds of sprouted millets like you said lentils uh, right. you made fabulous and ex fabulous dosa chilas everything out of sprouts and the idea was just uh, you know we can make food and the biggest filter even today is to make food that i can give my kids on a everyday basis yeah, if i don't okay. see there's a product which i can give my kids on a daily basis i won't make that product so i think that's the filter that is always going to be there for gladful or forever and that was the reason i started for us it was indonesia actually yeah <laughs> so we built the product with real chicken and i went to indonesia and i told them that uh, this is a brand from india they said currently on my page that india is good for garments and generic drugs that's all pet food it's europe and us india cannot mm-hmm. produce that and mm-hmm. it was like we had the best of the machines today also our, our factory is like the best in asia <laughs> complete automated but it was like 2014 came on the blood of the face that india can't make a pet food a core quality <laughs> pet food right so and it came like let's prove it wrong and try and today we export to 22 23 countries from india and likes of australia new zealand israel jordan <laughs> Dubai, uh, Saudi, yeah, yeah. everywhere, right? So it was like, oh, this is something like not that good. And, and and today we are like one of the biggest brands in pet food in the India. And and with we and and what like uh, as Parul was saying, the front of the pack is so good and all. They put all that. Maybe the one percent of the things is mentioned the front of the pack, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we start. We we and then in our cat is so emotionally engaging. Like pets, you know, the moment you see a good cat or a dog in the pack, a kid will pick it up anyway, whatever it's inside, right? Like a toy for him or a, a gift for his pet. A lot of brands use that as a very strong selling story of a bright, healthy, energetic, cute dog in the pack, puppies in the pack. So we also have a pet, but. we started highlighting a lot of these back of the pack things on the side bands also like 0% filler 100% real chicken uh, no grains so that also start i just want to let people see the good thing not only the front of the pack let's them see the back of the pack if not possible going completely to the back let's see from the side bands as well but again it's it's communication which is very very important So um everyone guys that brings me to the last question for uh, today uh you know when we talk about challenges uh because that's something that's a ongoing process and obstacle in all sorts of steps so um when it comes to challenges in uh, promoting transparency because it really boils down to that being a brand brilliant or not being brilliant so in the realm of uh, fmcg brands particularly those with the challenge of food domain uh what do you perceive as the key challenge which which you all face when it comes to ensuring transparency through uh, the ingredients sourcing uh, and the labeling process because it's very crucial you know you can say anything but you're not going to have to be transparent about it that's not a good brand i would say so so uh, how have you navigated these challenges um, if you have faced any within your respective organizations so many i'll just uh, kind of first of all just add uh, a little bit to the question itself One is why don't the larger companies really do it? It's not like they don't know there is a demand demand for a clean label product, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they could be. See, one I think uh, imagine any large company, if ninety percent or ninety nine percent of their revenue is coming from a product which is very well distributed, which is at a low price point and winning with the masses today. even if they innovate a, you know a new see, imagine a new chips getting launched in the market which has no maida no whatever palm oil <laughs> nothing right they will advertise it because it will attract 99% of their rest of the rep mm-hmm. so as a large established uh, fmcg will never innovate for clean label products because this is going to con- really directly question their existing consumer base So it is only left to small brands, younger brands, emerging brands to truly bring about change here. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we try, I think uh, one of the reasons is that we don't have that marketing monies, right? Those large marketing monies that we will have someday, but today we don't have. So when when I go and write on my packaging that this is a product which is free of maltodextrin, people don't know what's maltodextrin. For them, it's just one some something, so they they don't won't consider me as, <laughs> as they would the claims of another you know large highly marketed brand. So that's one challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think mo- as more and more brands talk about this, eventually the consumer will learn, and it it's going to be a process of four to five years because right. the larger marketing monies will never be thrown on these clean label brands. Is is something that I want to just table. the other challenge that we face as smaller brands is making sure that our manufacturing processes are extremely tight as a young brand we close our recipes we have to truly watch the entire uh, supply chain of procuring from the right places getting it manufactured making sure that it's not getting mixed with anything so that yes. you know uh, you know you're so and what happens at the end of it is your costs are a little higher compared mm-hmm. to the process that's available in the market Right. So uh, I think for us the struggle will be to be well, continue to be pure surviving and talking about our narrative till mm-hmm. the time the entire uh, I would say the larger consum- set of consumers are ready to pay for a premium product and they truly mm-hmm. understand what it is basically a question of time in my mind I feel if you if you are as a brand in it for the long haul I feel like that itself sets a lot of things uh, kind of deprioritizes a lot of things uh if you are in it for the long term sure the change is slow to come by but business in that sense is cyclical customers today are much more aware of things than our parents were we don't uh, and younger kids don't want to buy the brands we kind of uh, you know grew up with so there is clear uh, inclination to try newer brands be find brands that align with their personal value systems um and so yes it's challenging in the 
way that we cannot fight with a you know prevalent cola brand for shelf space for example um come summer and they will occupy 60% of all shelves they will occupy 80% of all manufacturing capacity and uh, all the smaller brands have to kind of try and squeeze in you know their production within the gaps that big brands uh, you know produce so right from manufacturing to finding retail shelf space to uh, fighting their ad money with your truth uh, to to fighting distribution or uh, you know i feel like the challenges are immense but the upside is that a you are in it for the long haul b today customers are much more inclined to try out new brands like i said that align with the value system so a it's tough but b if there was ever a good time to build an honest brand that comes from a good place i strongly believe that it is today it wasn't 10 years ago it was definitely not 20 years ago but today is that time i totally resonate with jyoti over here i think uh, for us right now the good part is we have the power of storytelling and i think all of us use it really well right we're able to show people what we do how we do why we do it and people are then able none of the big brands get to do that right no, no one's really showing their manufacturing units i have yeah. stories going out from my kitchen every morning showing my customers <laughs> hey listen this is what is going into your mixers correct yeah. so i think that kind of storytelling is a huge plus that brands like us have today and i think we use it very very well um and yeah those challenges the other challenges are always going to be there i mean they they therefore i'm sure even when you know the cola company started they were there and uh, for them in different ways but um the youth today definitely more aware uh definitely open to trying out new uh, you know newer uh, like jyoti said they're not really interested in you know actually i work with a different generation altogether right i come from a different <laughs> generation i'm working with a different generation so for me that just the insight of seeing what the way i think as the as versus the way jordan thinks is so different and i <laughs> always find myself vying towards what he's thinking because Let's face it; they are the majority. Right? I mean, we have the highest population of youth in the world, and that's where we are headed. And I think it's a great time to. I think you have a mixer there. there. You have a mixer there already with yours and Jordan's views. That's another yeah. topic. <laughs> Absolutely. What what like challenge which I also see for the young brands is that when Gladful comes and says that I'm true protein or coming from a very good source, <clears throat> the belief and the trust the consumer will take time because. So, for example, tea fit is kept at one place and Coke Zero is kept. Both says no right. sugar, right? The right. trust goes towards how a lot of consumer feels that a new brand, how it's overcommitting, maybe is it worth a lot? Same when we started, we doing Drew says real chicken as the first ingredient, boiled eggs, whole dried eggs as the second one, and the competition was chicken, saying chicken and chicken byproducts, right. and it was generic with the pet food, right? Mm. we all know pedigree means dog food so people in the early days never believed that we talking truth actually also so that was the biggest challenge which we faced as a brand and then we did a lot of transparency what jyotita is saying that how to showcase your manufacturing process the sourcing and and like we we belong to a ib pro family which is like third largest in poultry business they used to think that it's like all dead birds are we are using into the our our, our <laughs> food and all right So how to prove that that kind of trust and the bridge we have to make with the consumers and the trade channel as well, not only consumers because we cannot reach to million and million of pet uh, or, or your pet parents or your consumers. So these are the channel partners in between who can create that for you. Maybe the veterinarians, pet shop owners. So we start working them, making them believe that we had a huge population of layer birds. We use the real chicken for what what products it goes, how it's different, what amino acids is going to come in from that. all signs we talked about because creating that trust in coming and claiming is it true or not true we don't know right the customer or so there the help of veterinarians came up came a lot along with us and and, and finally today what we are actually that that made a lot of stuff but the initial days were very difficult that you saying real chicken how do you believe you right you tell me true very insightful to sound that's very very true so somebody um, has to talk on our behalf and that were the influencers we caught upon like veterinarians veterinary colleges deans of veterinary schools so that they talk about your real chicken is good then any pick up any brand which has that i don't mind it right if drool says real chicken very good if any other brand is chicken very good but let make real chicken important about the ingredients as well in pet food yeah. so that's something which we had a huge challenge
This has been a uh, piece for me, a very uh, insightful uh, uh, panel discussion. I don't even think I can call it a round table because there's so much to learn from people like you. You know, it's it's a uh, it, it's I wouldn't call myself the other generation, but just to speak with people who have uh, started startups and reached this place where you all have reached now. And, um, I think it's very insightful and enlightening to have conversations with all of you. Um, on that note, uh, I think I have no questions to ask, but we would love as a brand at Jules to get closing remarks from you people because we have the precious time that we've stolen from you all. We shall make the most of it, and um, we would love to know from your you know point of view for the brand. Uh, you know, any closing remarks that you have when we're discussing ingredients and backpack. You know, because that's what we are focusing on today. I think um, you know I've had a great discussion. Um, I think my closing remarks is that you know collectively as brands we need to see how we can start impacting children a little more so that they know how to read the back of packs a little early. Smart one. Yeah. Um, it'll be very difficult for uh, any one brand to do that. But if we in our places in our local areas we can get in touch with a few schools, we are right. trying to do the same and educate children about the back of pack, uh, how to read the nutri table, what are the Key ingredients to avoid. What are the stabilizers versus emulsifiers versus preservatives? I think that itself will, uh, like you said, the youth has to change it, and it'll change in the next few years. So I think we can all make a start from there. I think so too. I think education so, is like at the topmost here, right? People should yeah. just know what things are about, and if brands like us can talk about it on our social media constantly, I think it'll be a you know a great thing yeah. to do. But this was awesome, ladies. Sashank, thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure and so much learning from all of you all, guys. So my closing remarks, I feel Parul summed it up really well. In yeah. fact, um, nutrition as a subject should be a core in schooling. Uh, we eat a lot more processed food today than we did in our parents' generation and than we did in my generation growing up. But the amount of processed food that's just available in the market of just a basic, uh, like you have moral science or uh, subject, which is not really heavy, but it kind of educates <laughs> enough about social values. Uh, I feel like uh, 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 an entry level subject around nutrition, around reading back of the pack, around what sugar can do um, around uh, you know all of that just a simple uh, like we I was discussing with food farmer who's very popular now on Instagram and everywhere for uh, you know making people aware about what brands claim versus what uh, they really do uh, and we're discussing the just a uh, simple blackboard in schools that shows the different sugar levels in different brands of beverages would be an eye-opener very simple but very effective communication so it all boils down to yes there should be absolute strict regulations around it but we are a developing country we will get there until then the onus or the responsibility a little bit is also on brands like us who have who are kind of choosing the tougher road to play our role in in educating the ecosystem so exactly like you see all of us are here for a long haul like we're not building a business for one or two or ten years right yeah and the only uh, which we i feel personally that empowering your customer because we want to be picked up again and again from the shelf right mm -hmm. we want to be ordered again and again on your websites mm -hmm. that will only happen when as a brand we make our consumers empowered a lot if they know what they're buying they'll keep buying the product what they like they will never mm -hmm. That's something which the key I feel is closing in my mind.